part, this is a science film. In part, this is a proposal from me to you for dramatically changing the world. Mostly, this is all extremely interesting. It explains truly life-changing breakthroughs in physics. And a special topic that deals with water, droughts, famine, and the planet's environment. Altogether, this film covers three main topics. The solution to the question, what is time? The grand unification of physics and the solution to fusion energy. In my opinion, directly and indirectly, this new physics is going to dramatically change your life. One very interesting, very specific benefit of this new physics is it will enable us to collect massive amounts of fresh water in hot deserts. Obviously, a benefit like that would greatly help to eliminate droughts and famines. In essence, this new physics is very green. Each site would have multiple pipes. So if one needs to be shut down for maintenance, then there will always be other pipes operational to maintain flow of water. Each site would have many above ground and underground water reservoirs. These reservoirs would be filled up early in the project. Then they would be used as a buffer to help maintain a constant stream of water. A consistent source of water is very important for living in deserts. Actually, in a hot desert, there's probably nothing more important. Over time, it will be easy to predict exactly how much water each dog can provide. Over time, computer models will be able to calculate the optimum levels of irrigation. Over time, it will become clear exactly how much land each particular dog can support. Over time, additional pipes can be added to increase capacity as needed. Over time, the underground pipes can also be lengthened to help improve their geothermal cooling ability. For example, you might start out with pipes that are 500 meters long. If you're not pleased with their performance, then you might increase them to, say, 600 meters, or, or whatever length makes sense. This is the point where I could get carried away. This is where I've deleted many extremely interesting topics that I would love to tell you about. I could easily give another two hour presentation on the details of this idea. To summarize, using fusion powered desert oasification, atmospheric water generators, vast areas of the Sahara region could be transformed into lush, wet, green lands. Personally, I think this idea is both very interesting and potentially is a great charitable idea. In my opinion, fusion powered dogs will provide a nice combination of both electricity and water. Any region with hot deserts could benefit. Again, I emphasize hot deserts because hot air contains much more moisture than cold air. This is not a good strategy for cool dry deserts. As I'm writing this, it is hot, it is humid, and my cold drink is dripping water all over my desk in front of my computer's monitor. Whenever you see a cold glass covered with condensation, just think of the physics involved. Imagine how this idea can be used to help the world. Besides Africa, there are large regions with hot deserts in South America, Mexico, India, Australia, and China, and in many areas all over the world. These hot, arid regions tend to be poor and experience famines, droughts, and dust storms. We could also use dogs to improve regions here in the desert southwest of the United States. I am sure Texas could have used these last year in the summer of 2011 talk about droughts, dust storms, and fires. This year, 2012, has also been tough. It has been very hot and very dry. It has not been a good year for forest fires. The entire city of Cold Springs, Colorado, came very close to burning down. Imagine how desert oasification atmospheric water generators would help in these situations. Instead of an area completely running out of water, there would be a steady supply. 
Instead of having drought conditions that leave dried up brown plants everywhere you look, your view in every direction would contain lots of green. This would reduce the risk of having massive forest fires. Because of the fires in this area out west in Colorado, Arizona, and now in Oklahoma, I would love to discuss this topic more. Unfortunately, in this science film, there's not enough time. The important idea is to imagine water reservoirs as being much more than lakes and rivers. The atmosphere is a water reservoir. Plant life is a water reservoir. The soil and the biomass in the soil are water reservoirs. The key to transforming a hot desert like the Sahara is to take some of the water out of the atmospheric water reservoir, a reservoir that naturally re replenishes itself, and rebuild the other reservoirs of water. In my opinion, with respect to the Sahara's dry conditions, we now have the technology to reverse this desert's tipping point. Desert oasification, atmospheric water generators, can tip the balance in hot desert regions. They can tip the balance from brown to green, from dry to wet. If we so desire, we can restore the lush green vegetation to much of the Sahara. Imagine how that would benefit Africa and the world. What about here in the United States, in areas like Phoenix? What about Las Vegas or Los Angeles? Have you ever seen any of the massive dust storms that have swept over Phoenix in recent years? If you haven't, there are many videos online. Imagine preventing Phoenix and our other desert southwest cities from becoming massive ghost towns as they run out of water. At this very moment, these and other desert southwest cities are in very precarious situations. Every fire out west is rapidly putting each of these cities at much greater risk. Even the distant fires in Oklahoma or Colorado puts these cities at much greater risk. Yes, a fire in Oklahoma or Colorado puts a city like Las Vegas or Phoenix at much greater risk. Anytime major fires in the desert southwest region of the United States could dramatically reduce this region's ability to retain water. Dust bowl conditions could return almost immediately at any time. During the summer of 2012, thousands of record high temperatures have been set. In recent months, massive fires have been destroying billions of individual water reservoirs. Maybe the transformation into the next Dust Bowl is happening right now. Remember the Dust Bowl? The current theory is, back then, the farmers made the long drought worse. When they used improper farming techniques, the tilling of the soil rapidly dried out the soil. As the plows cut through the soil and flipped it over, this destroyed the water reservoir that once was made up of both prairie grasses and the fertile soil. The dried out prairie soil simply blew away in the wind. Using fusion energy to green the deserts will benefit the atmosphere. With fusion energy, we can have an almost unlimited amount of clean water anytime, just about anywhere in the world. We don't need to build massive desalination plants along oceans. We don't need to build massive pipelines across countries, across borders, through areas of conflict or potential conflict. Every hot desert has more than enough moisture in the air to benefit from this idea. The trick is to continuously take a small percentage of moisture out of the air and use it to grow plants to refill all of nature's other water reservoirs and to fill our man-made water reservoirs. By simply growing desert grasses in the desert sands, we can start a new layer of healthy topsoil. If we employ any of the many new advanced techniques and the ancient technique of terra preta, then we can dramatically speed up this natural transformation. We can rapidly transform sterile desert sands into healthy topsoil. However, desert farmers need to be trained on the terra preta technique. Billions of dollars have already been wasted 
by simply pouring valuable water onto desert sands. What a waste. If charcoal had been gradually incorporated into the sands, then these overly irrigated sands would now be holding both water and nutrients. Over time, a reservoir of moisture will build up in the topsoil. Over time, a reservoir of water will build up in the plant life. Over time, desert basins will refill and once again become lakes. Ancient rivers will flow again. New rivers will form. With fusion energy, these new water reservoirs can be maintained year after year. Over time, any natural rain will help the plant life and animal life spread out through the desert beyond what the fusion energy is safely maintaining. Thus, the tipping point of arid regions can now be reversed. They can be transformed into wet, lush, green lands. Fusion power desert wastification, atmospheric water generators, will allow us to start changing our local climates. We can do this without draining the ancient aquifers. Over time, this will change the entire planet's climate. As we green large areas of sterile and arid deserts, massive amounts of new plants will grow, gigatons of new plants. Imagine how this will change the carbon balance of the atmosphere. All of these new plants will need carbon. That carbon must come from somewhere. As these new plants grow, they will pull massive amounts of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. The new plants will make more oxygen. Carbon dioxide levels will drop. Oxygen levels will go up. Again, in my opinion, the world's environmental goal is simple. Grow more plants. Further, as coal power plants are replaced by fusion power plants, we will rapidly reduce the amounts of carbon and other pollutants we put into the atmosphere. You will not need to feel guilty about using gasoline-powered internal combustion engines for minor things like motorcycles or chainsaws, watercraft, or for hundreds of other specialized reasons. Further, we should be able to keep using aircraft powered with jet engines.